you're going to speak about the uh, the currency component of Cantrade. Can you advance this? Okay, so uh, our goal always is to uh, make sure that we completely understand our client's uh, profile, what their risk profile is, what kind of payments they have to make, uh, and how those payments affect their bottom line. Because the bottom line is what we focus on. Our, our ability to, uh, to uh, enhance margin or protect margin is where we really provide value to our clients. So we do an investigative process with the client where we're going to sit down with them and make sure we understand all the stakeholders' needs within their business framework. And a key outcome for our uh, investigation for Cantrade was that the executive team was operating their currency risk management program in a silo. And uh, what we mean by that is the sales team and the purchasing team were making decisions outside of uh, uh, an informal uh, hedging policy that the finance team had developed. And what we did and what we thought we should be doing was having all three of these stakeholders involved in making the decisions about what the hedging program should look like because they were all affecting the margin for the company. So for example, the salespeople were going out and making commitments to deliver products over a long period of time without understanding what the finance department had committed to to manage the risk on the input costs. Okay? And what this really means to the company is margin is being eroded with no ability to protect it. Okay? Um, when the finance team makes decisions outside of the realm of the other stakeholders, they're putting the company's margins at risk and they're backfilling. So uh, what we decided to do was, was do a complete analysis of this with all stakeholders involved and come up with a formal policy. Um, the most important thing that we looked at was that the finance department was um, not able to think outside the box when it came to sending payments or receiving payments from some of the foreign jurisdictions that CanTrade wanted to do business in. What we wanted to demonstrate to them is that there are certain advantages to dealing in local currencies. So what we really did was we encouraged outside the box thinking for all the stakeholders. We encouraged them to develop a formal FX policy that's reviewed every year by all the stakeholders. And what that did for them was it gave them the ability to fix the prices for their inputs and fix the prices for their outputs so they were protecting margins. Um, what this did was it gave them a plan and it gave them a horizon that they could now go out and plan sales with or plan acquisitions with or plan purchases with. So they now had a budget. Um, in order to support that, our team went and put together an appropriate trading facility for them. So we now took all of the uh, hedging process that they had used their bank for and we took that operating line and freed it up so they can go and do what operating lines for is which to operate your business, we gave them an appropriate trading facility that allowed them to take a look at what it was they needed to do over a longer period of time and have the ability now to make decisions about hedging their currency over a longer period of time without impacting their bottom line because we're providing the facility that has no cash flow impact. And that was a real strong thing for them because now they're able to use their money to, to leverage the, the, uh, the things they want to do in Eastern Europe or in China. The other thing that we did that was really creative is we looked at what jurisdictions they were receiving payments from for where they were opening up new business. And traditionally in Eastern Europe or in, in uh, Brazil or, or even Peru where they want to go, everybody deals in US dollars because it's traditional and it's easy. Well, it's easy for us, but it's not easy for the people in these other countries because when you ask them for US currency, you're forcing the currency risk from your business onto them. So that makes you not as easy to deal with with someone who's a local competitor. So if you can remove that currency risk for your clients and, and, and take advantage of their local currency and their local banking, you're going to have a competitive advantage with them. If you have a competitive advantage, they're going to want to be able to do business with you more often. Um, so what we're able to do then is take a look at a whole overall picture of what the payment process needed to look like, how we can take advantage of the banking relationships that exist for our company in foreign jurisdictions like Europe or like Brazil or like Peru and become efficient. And that works both ways. So on your vendor side, where you're selling product to vendors who are selling it for you and you need to receive payments, we can ensure that you receive those payments much more efficiently than if you're getting a draft or a wire or a check currently through their local bank, through your interbank, through our domestic bank, and then it's a longer process. So we can set up a facility that allows CanTrade now to have real tight, efficient payments, which means their banking partners are gonna be happy because they're seeing those receivables. So in a nutshell, what we're able to do is take a look at where currency affects the bottom line and design a strategy for CanTrade 
that takes advantage of best practices that we see globally right now. And globally, payments and hedging payments are going non-traditional. And for us in Canada, non-traditional means you're looking at the way to take advantage of the strength of the Canadian dollar outside of the U.S. framework. So that's what we do for CanTrade. We make them efficient. And we work with them on a monthly or quarterly basis, depending on what the situation is, to make sure we're continually looking at best practices from across our business to apply to them. 